there everybody. I wanted to do a quick lesson on meta directing versus ortho para directing because this is a subject that a lot of students come across and they struggle with and they seem to not really understand why the electron withdrawing groups or the deactivators will meta direct and why the activators slash electron donating groups will ortho para direct. So I really want to take a look at this so that people can understand why the strong electron withdrawing groups will meta direct specifically the meta directors and then we'll still look at the ortho para directors because that's important as well so this is kind of a breakdown of the theory that goes into ortho para directing versus meta directing we're going to take a look at meta directing first so here we go if you take a look at a typical aromatic ring and you put an electron withdrawing group on it, a very strong electron withdrawing group. So one of the ones that I tend to use is nitro when I'm explaining this. But a lot of the carbonyl groups will also work in terms of proving the point here. Anything that's a strong electron withdrawing group. Nitro is a common one because nitration of aromatic rings is a well-known reaction. It's usually done in most organic chemistry two labs. And it also comes up as one of the reactions used in lecture very often. So let's say that we're going to add some sort of a compound. Now I'm going to keep this general for this lecture. If we wanted to actually add a compound, we could talk about all the different reagents, but let's just use our general electrophile here. And we'll say we're going to add X plus, right? Whatever X plus is. So it might be Br plus, or it might be a nitro group or something like that. But most of these reactions are electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. So the electrophilic is talking about the fact there's an electrophile. Aromatic, we're dealing with an aromatic ring. And substitution, we're going to substitute a hydrogen in place of whatever electrophile group is coming in. So let's take a look at nitro. Nitro is a strong electron withdrawing group. So we would expect that this is going to meta direct. All right, so what I first want to do is I want to take a look at if it were to ortho para direct. So if this group were to ortho para direct, okay, now this is not what happens. So make a note if you're following along. This is not going to happen, all right? But if a nitro group were to ortho para direct, here's what we would take a look at. So you've got the nitro group, and the way that this mechanism would work is that. Uh, let's say we'll go ahead and we'll add it to the para position, right? So this guy comes out, it seeks out the electrophile. And so what we end up with is a para direction of X. And then of course we have our carbocation that's left behind. And the real answer here, as far as why is this going to be a meta director and not an ortho para director, comes through resonance. Resonance is going to explain this. So let's take a look at this general resonance form. So we can move these electrons closer that are uh, close to the nitro down towards the carbocation and one of the structures we get is going to look like this. So you've got your nitro group up here. You now have the bond that is down here. Here's our X group that we've added. Here's the other pi bond. And now we have a plus charge by the nitro group, right? And then we could move this again. We could take these pi electrons, move them up here using resonance. We're going to end up shifting this around and we would end up with the plus charge here. Okay? Now something important to note is that the plus charge, no matter where you have added your group, whether you ortho directed, para directed, or meta directed, the plus charge will always land ortho, para, and ortho to the incoming group. So in other words, here's X, the incoming group. The charge is ortho, it's para, and it's ortho. Even if you meta direct your group to the nitro, you're going to have the charge that's left behind being directed ortho, para, ortho. That's the way that the charge will always resonate when you've got that. So if you take a look here, these are the three possible resonance structures. The serious issue is with this one in the middle. So let's highlight this in red so that we're aware this is the problematic form. Okay, 
And the issue is that I'm putting a plus charge. Remember that a plus charge is a lack of electrons, right? A plus charge represents a lack of electrons. And we're placing a plus charge right next to an electron withdrawing group, right? So think about what that means. I'm taking a group that is electron withdrawing at the top of the ring. So it's like an electron vacuum cleaner that's attempting to suck up electron property from anything in proximity that's in the ring. And then one of the resonance forms right underneath that electron withdrawing vacuum cleaner, so to speak, is a positive charge, something that is lacking electrons. So it's a very bad idea to take a carbon that's lacking electrons and put it in direct proximity to an electron withdrawing group that's trying to take electrons from that carbon that already has a lack of electrons. This is a very destabilizing situation that we've got right here. And so this is not going to be good in terms of the stability of your intermediates for this reaction. And that sort of shuts down this orthopara directing. So if you were to have any orthopara directing when you have an elect a strong electron withdrawing group on the ring, it's going to be minimal. So maybe two or three percent of your product. The bulk of your product is going to be meta directed in terms of the incoming electrophile, provided there's a strong electron withdrawing group on the ring. And that's because we want to avoid this structure right here all right so a lot of students get confused they think that f when you have an electron withdrawing group it's going to meta direct because there's some sort of beneficial effect due to meta directing and that's not the case meta directing doesn't have any sort of special effects it's the fact that ortho para directing has a detrimental effect a downside or a bad effect and that is what's going to really sort of shut this reaction down part way all right, so that's why these groups are going to meta direct. So if I clear the board here, right, and I take a look at this, let's take a look at if we were to meta direct. Oops, I don't need to save that. Uh, sorry, give me a second here, guys. Clear, don't save. Okay, so if I were to meta direct using this, and that this is what should happen. Okay, so I've got NO2. And if I'm going to meta direct, I'm going to place the group right here instead. And here's my plus charge. It's going to be ortho to the incoming group. So I can move this down here, right? This set of pi bonds. So one of my resonance structures is going to be, here's my X, here's my plus, here's my nitro. And then I can also move this guy over here. And what I'm going to end up with is the plus charge over here, All right? So again, plus charge is ortho, para, and ortho to the X group, the group that I just added. But what's important here is that you can see in each case, when I look at each of these resonance structures, I miss putting the plus charge directly underneath the electron withdrawing group. That's a good thing. I do not want a lack of electrons, a carbocation, directly underneath of something that's trying to suck up electron property. Carbocations already need electrons as it is. So it's a very bad idea to put them in direct proximity to something that's looking to steal more electron property from a carbocation. So that explains meta directing and why electron withdrawing groups will meta direct instead of ortho para direct. All right. Now, if we take a look, let's clear the board again. This time I want to take a look at what happens with an ortho para director. Well, in the case of an ortho para director, whoops, I don't want red. So let's undo that. In the case of an ortho para director, now it turns out that ortho para directing is beneficial when there's an electron donating group around. So let's draw our general structure. Here's an OH, all right? So this would be an electron donating group. And if I take a look at this, let's go ahead and do the para direction like we've been doing. So if this group were to para direct, and that is what would happen. 
the first structure that I would have is I'd say, okay, I've added X here. Here's my plus charge. Remember, we didn't want this with the meta direction, but now with the ortho para direction and an electron donating group, we actually are going to have benefits here. So see if you can see what it's going to be. Here's the X, right? And now I put a plus charge right underneath here. So whereas this particular form would have been detrimental to a electron withdrawing group, an electron donating group is actually going to take some electrons and donate them down to the carbocation. And what you end up with is a bonus resonance structure that you wouldn't have had if you attempted to para direct. So you're going to have a double bond here associated. Now there's a plus charge with this oxygen. All right. But this extra resonance structure, and let's draw the other one here. Okay. Because you would still have your third resonance structure going around the ring where you would have something that looks like this. But it's the fact that you're going to gain a fourth resonance form. That is a huge deal when you're talking about stability. The fourth resonance form is going to do further delocalization of electrons. It's going to benefit this carbocation and spread it out a little bit further. Electron withdrawing groups don't have the ability to do that. The electron donating groups, specifically the ones that can donate by resonance like hydroxyl, are going to be able to offer an additional resonance structure. And that's why in the case of an electron donating group, the ortho para direction is preferred. This is the preferred method because we're going to gain a fourth resonance form. That's what's so important here. You get an additional resonance form when you ortho para direct with electron donating groups by resonance. Now I say by resonance because not all donators can do donation by resonance. You have methyl groups that will sort of donate by hyperconjugation and inductive effects, but they will not donate necessarily through direct resonance like something with lone pairs. So I hope that this has cleared up a little bit of confusion in terms of meta directing and ortho para directing and why we prefer one over another. So to sum it up, meta directors are meta directing in order to avoid a bad situation. They don't really get anything beneficial out of meta directing. It's that they avoid something detrimental when they're ortho para directing. That's why they meta direct. And when you have your ortho para directors, your electron donating groups, they prefer to ortho para direct because they gain a benefit. In the case of electron donating groups, you actually gain something by ortho para directing. It's not that an electron donating group couldn't meta direct, it could. It's the fact that if it decides to meta direct, it's going to lose out on a fourth resonance structure that it can have if it decides to ortho para direct. So hopefully that was clear. I know that was kind of a mouthful. Um, I hope this video was helpful. Please remember to like if you enjoyed it and it helped you. If you comment, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And subscribing always helps the channel continue to grow and allows me to make new videos. So thanks for learning with me and I will see you guys next time.